Hi, it's Shushmita Bhumik from Kalosam BD. Today I'll be talking about the synthesis of thyroid hormone. It is much important for first prof, particularly for written exam. In Viva, teachers ask many questions randomly on this topic. To know about the physiology of synthesis of thyroid hormone clearly, we need to have a clear concept of the structure of thyroid gland. So let's go take a look on the anatomy of thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a bilobed structure. It is situated immediately below the larynx and anterior to the trachea. In adult, its normal weight is 15 to 20 grams. Histologically, thyroid gland is composed of large numbers of closed follicles. These are functional tissues of the gland. The follicles are lined with cuboidal epithelial cells. They secrete the thyroid hormones T3 and T4. T3 is triiodothyronine and T4 is thyroxine. Follicles are filled with secretory substance which is called colloid. Major constituent of colloid is thyroglobulin. It is a large glycoprotein molecule which contains the thyroid hormones. This gland also contains C cells or parafollicular cells in between the follicles. They secrete calcitonin. Thyroid gland has profuse blood supply. The blood flow is about 5 times the weight of the gland each minute. In this video, we will discuss on how particular follicular cell is collecting the raw materials and synthesizing thyroid hormone. We will also review on how the thyroid follicles store the hormones in the colloid and how T3 and T4 are taken up by these cells and secreted into the blood. Let's go into details of how a single follicular cell works. We need three raw materials for the synthesis of thyroid hormones. These are iodide ion, thyroglobulin, thyroid peroxidase enzyme. We will describe the process of synthesis of thyroid hormone in some steps. First step is iodide trapping. Iodide ion is used as raw material for synthesis process. To form normal quantities of thyroxine, about 50 mg of ingested iodide is required each year. That means 1 mg per week. Even this little amount is very important to prevent iodine deficiency. Common table salt is iodized with about 1 part sodium iodide to every 1 lakh parts sodium chloride. Iodides are orally ingested and absorbed from the GIT into the blood. Normally, most of the iodides, about 80%, is rapidly excreted by kidneys, but only 20% is selectively removed from circulating blood by the cells of thyroid gland. This 20% is used for synthesis of the thyroid hormones. Here you will face a question. How these iodide ions enter the cells? The answer is, the basal membrane of the thyroid cell have the special ability to pump the iodide ion actively to the interior of the cell. This pumping is achieved by sodium iodide symporter. It co-transports one iodide ion along with two sodium ions across the basolateral membrane. As this is an active process. Of course, it needs energy. The energy for transporting iodide ion against a concentration gradient comes from the sodium-potassium pump. This pump establishes a low intracellular sodium concentration. So, a concentration gradient is generated. This gradient facilitates the diffusion of sodium into the cell. In this process, iodide ions are concentrated in a cell. For this reason, it is called iodide trapping. Iodide ion is transported out of the thyroid cells across the apical membrane by chloride iodide counter transporter molecule. This molecule is called pendrin. 
The rate of iodide trapping by the thyroid is maintained mainly by the concentration of thyroid stimulating hormone. The second step is the synthesis of another raw material thyroglobulin molecule. Thyroglobulin is composed of many types of amino acids. Most important among them is tyrosine. Now the question is how thyroglobulin is formed? In the nucleus of the thyroid cells, there is special types of gene which is responsible for transcription of a special type of mRNA. This mRNA is translated to thyroglobulin in the ribosome. Then it enters the endoplasmic reticulum and becomes glycosylated. Here is a question. What is the purpose of converting thyroglobulin into a glycoprotein? The answer is this mechanism facilitates the transport of thyroglobulin into follicular lumen. After that, it is packaged into small vesicle by Golgi body. These vesicles will fuse with the apical membrane of the follicular cell. The third step is the oxidation of the iodide ion. It is the first essential step. In this step, iodide ions are converted to oxidized form of iodine or nascent iodine. This oxidation is promoted by the enzyme thyroid peroxidase and its accompanying hydrogen peroxide. The peroxidase is located in the apical membrane of the cell. This peroxidase has many other functions too. We'll see about that later. The fourth step is organification of thyroglobulin and coupling reactions. Actually, this is a misnomer. The correct term for this is organification of iodine. Because thyroglobulin molecule is itself an organic molecule, but iodine is inorganic. The binding of iodine with thyroglobulin molecule is called organification. This process occurs within seconds to minutes because the oxidized iodine is associated with thyroid peroxidase enzyme. So here we see another function of thyroid peroxidase. Iodine may bind at one or two sites of tyrosine. If one iodine binds with one tyrosine molecule, three monoiodotyrosine will form. If two iodine binds with one tyrosine molecule, three five diiodotyrosine will be formed. Now, two adjacent iodinized tyrosine will form bond between them with the help of thyroid peroxidase. In other term, we can say that iodotyrosine residues become coupled with one another. If one monoiodotyrosine binds with one diiodotyrosine, 353 prime triiodothyronine will be formed. This molecule is called T3. If two molecules of diiodotyrosine binds together, thyroxine or T4 will be formed. Some amount of reverse T3 are also formed by coupling of diiodotyrosine with monoiodotyrosine. The fifth step is storage of the thyroglobulin. After synthesis of the thyroid hormones, each thyroglobulin molecule contains up to 30 T4 molecules and a few T3 molecules. Thyroid hormones are stored in the form of thyroglobulin in the colloid of the follicles. This storage can supply the body for 2-3 to three months with its normal requirements. Therefore, when synthesis of thyroid hormone ceases, the physiological effects of deficiency are not observed for several months. The sixth step is to release the T3 and T4 from thyroid gland. Most are released from the apical surface of thyroid cells which send out pseudopore extension. These extensions close around small portions of the colloid to form pinocytic vesicles that enter the apex of the thyroid cell. Then lysosomes located in the cell cytoplasm fuse with these vesicles to form digestive vesicles. Digestive vesicles contain digestive enzymes. Multiple proteases among the enzymes digest the thyroglobulin molecules 
and release thyroxine and triiodothyronine in free form. Then this thyroxine and triiodothyronine diffuse through the base of the thyroid cell into surrounding capillaries. However, during the coupling reactions, about three quarters of iodinated tyrosine never become thyroid hormone. These iodinated tyrosines are also freed from the thyroglobulin molecule during the digestion process, but they are not secreted into the blood. Instead, their iodine is cleaved from them by deiodinase enzyme to make those iodine available again for recycling. In the congenital absence of this deiodinase enzyme, many persons become iodine deficient because of failure of the recycling process. Now let's summarize the steps of thyroid hormone synthesis. Number 1. Iodide trapping. Number 2. Synthesis of thyroglobulin molecule. Number 3. Oxidation of the iodide ion. Number 4. Organification and coupling. Number 5. Storage of the thyroglobulin and Number 6. Release of the thyroid hormones. Thanks for watching. Bye.